Um, the Magellan Project. Some of you may have heard it, some of you may have not. What is it? It's basically a government uh, funded project with the aim to improve uh, children's computers literacy ages 6 to 12, elementary school children. It has dual boot, Microsoft Windows and Linux Caixa Magica. Uh, it is an Intel Classmate PC based, this one. Uh, it had the first deployment of 300,000 computers based on an older hardware, the one that is here, Magellan MG1, and it's now until the end of this year, it will be another 250,000 deploys. Caixa Magica is the main Linux uh, Portuguese distribution. We have free installation DVDs, CDs, uh, KDE, GNOME, other Windows managers. We have official phone and email support for the paid version, uh, which is basically the difference for the free version. Uh, we have uh, USB versions with read and write support. We have free user forums. We have a shared base with Mandrive, although we are uh, changing it to Ubuntu. So, what is, how do you make a project as big as this one? How do we make it work? We ask help for the right people. First, design and development. We had the help of Nuno Pinheiro, which is the KDE Oxygen Coordinator, which is Portuguese, good. Uh, and also Tomás Canabrava, which is a key, key, QT KDE developer, which helped us make uh, something in the, in the interface I'm going to show you later. We had the help from a language institute, a Portuguese language institute. Since it is for kids, it's for schools, we had to make sure everything was correctly uh, spelled, uh, everything was okay, since otherwise the Ministry of Education would, <laughs> would not be very pleased. We had hardware support by Realtek and Intel. Special Realtek helped us uh, with the host AP support for this uh, wireless driver, which they didn't have. And it's not working very well in general, but it's working okay for this project. So this uh, computer has OSTP support. The teacher, and I will talk about it later, uh, can make this uh, an OSTP and uh, every children in all classrooms can have uh, access to the teacher's computers. We have quality assurance by Anglo Solis, a Portuguese company which has many deploys of uh, Linux installations. And most important, we had the, the help from usability teams, especially this one that I refer here, which made uh, focus group interaction, usability reports, uh, and basically we had to make sure that kids and teachers actually wanted to use and uh, were ready to use uh, this Linux distribution. One thing that's very important in, in this kind of deployments uh, is to choose a killer app. Um, and we chose SuperTux. Okay, it's not very educational, uh, but kids love it. And we wanted that kids love it so that they, can, they will choose to boot to Linux. SuperTux, uh, it's a standard SuperTux, except we made some um, developments on top of it. We made sure we had the download and upload of levels through the interface of the game itself. Um, the upload of high scores through the game interface also to a web page so that everybody who wants to upload their high scores can check it out on the web page so everybody can keep track. Ah, I'm better than you and all of that, have more coins, that kind of thing. We had to make sure we got full, full Portuguese support, language wise, and we had a support web page for the, the, the high scores and all of that to the download and upload of levels also through the, the web page and all of that. This was the first version of the Magellan, the MG1, those 300,000 uh, computers that I talked about. Uh, it was about two years ago. It was still KDE 3, so we had the Super Caramba theme displaying the main applications. Um, we had the Caixa Magica 12, which is the, our Linux version at the time. Uh, standard KDE 3, full hardware support, a larger interface bar so kids could uh, see things better. Um, there was and there still is a recovery system from our disk, so if someone just messes up with the system, it's easy to make it all, all as it was when they receive it. And you have an easy to install new software from web, a click and install system, which we didn't have, and we made it for that version. This is the, the latest version, it's the one which is installed in this one that I have. It's basically as KDE4, so it has a, a plasmoid. Plasmoids, this is an example. Uh, it uses Caixa Magica 14, which was the latest version of Caixa Magica at the time. Now we have i 15. KDE 4, full hardware support, including a light sensor, which the first version of the Magellan didn't have, and the OSTP support for the wireless driver. 
um, this version of the Magellan is installable on the first hardware version of the Magellan. We made sure it's totally compatible so everyone who has the first version can install this version on it and have all the bells and whistles of this one. And it has a graphical recovery system from AG. The other one was uh, text mode, send cursor system. This one has a better one. So, why do people want, will want to do boot to Caixa Magica and not Windows? First, the look and feel. This is a plasma by by Tomás Canabrava, which is a multi-folder view. This is basically reading a folder that has desktop files in it, and it just shows them. Um, you have a clock widget, which is actually running. It is a still shot, but you cannot see it, but if you want, you can see it here. It's actually working on the desktop, integrated. The second pointer is working. We have a theme made by Nuno Pinheiro, um, and we have the KDE desktop effects standard enabled by default. Then we have things that we needed to make sure were like this so it was easier for people to use. One application per task is essential. Great system MIME type handling, browser MIME type handling. Uh, easy parental controls for access control, application control, and time usage control. Timekeeper and some developments we made ourselves. Uh, great and simple games for children. Uh, for instance, full localized to Portuguese, Portugal, Portuguese for J Compri. Uh, desktop lockdown. Make sure that people don't mess around with the desktop too much because they usually don't know how to put it back together, like for instance, removing the plasmoid of the main applications. And of course, good localization and language consistency across menus. It's important that people read the same thing for the different thing, for different applications. They know open here, open like that, not open application, close another thing. People don't really understand if things are not written in the same way. For the, basically for the teacher's computer, because this computer is for teachers, for, for students, but also for teachers, and they have to use it in the classroom. So we had the easy way to configure the teacher's computer as an access point, because not all classrooms have wireless and some of them don't really work. Uh, so the teacher computer is very easily configured as an access point, so the students' computers can uh, use it. Um, then we have uh, pre configure sh shared folder on the teacher's computer, so also kids just click, open a folder, and it's the computer's, uh, the teacher's folder. They place documents there, whatever they want. Um, simple iTalk uh, client and server configuration. iTalk is a way for the teacher to uh, see the desktops of the, of the students. We made sure we had a very simple way to pass the authentication keys that iTalk server needs to connect to the students, and we also made sure that the iTalk client is all, always running in every computer. And we have a classroom management software made by a Portuguese company, which is basically a PHP software that is running on the teacher's computer and which the students access very easily. So we had to make sure that we had all the software that teachers would use it, would want to use it on the classroom, and that was actually usable. And we also had to make sure that the kids wanted to boot, either to play or to use in the classroom also with this computer. Um, we have to make one of the things that I say in the following remarks is, is that. First, use a clean desktop, no cluttering. Don't place too many things on the, on the desktop. Just place the essential things and that's it. People don't want to see many things there because, because they don't know it. They won't use it if they don't know it. One application per task is essential. Don't put too many things, even though some are better than others for other tasks. Look and feel is essential. The first time they boot the computer, if they see a not so pretty desktop, they won't use it, even if it's a lot better than the other one. Simplify everything, even if losing configuration options. We remove some of the um, uh, configuration and click with the, the right mouse button because they, people just didn't know what to do with them. So we uh, remove them simply from the context menus. They don't need it. If they need it, they usually don't. <laughs> you have to think that this is for kids and teachers, people that are not very computer friendly. Don't oversimplify. Sometimes, for instance, we, had, we, th we thought about using uh, Open Office for kids. We ended up using uh, standard Open Office because teachers in our focus groups thought that they lose too many functionalities. And, okay, we'll use standard Open Office. Keep in mind that although it's designed for young children, teachers and parents will use it too. This is very important because this is for children, but they are not the only ones that are going to use it. Think that. I have at least one or two killer apps that uh, will make kids uh, use it, or even teachers that are not found on the other operating system. And the most important thing, 
Use focus groups, whatever you want, but test your system before releasing it with real teachers, real kids, in a real classroom, and make sure they they can use it. They use it in an easy way. They understand what is on their, 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 their desktop without the need for someone to tell them. And all the configuration things they have to do are simple click, next, 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 to start, next, 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 to stop, whatever, and that's it. Because they know what they want. You can only guess, unfortunately. We on the developing side, developing sides, a lot of times think that we know what people want. And that's not absolutely not true. And that's it. Any questions? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm impressed now with the presentation, but I have a question. Uh, because it is a dual boot system, people can still boot into Windows. Why do they still boot into Windows? Are, what are the most important applications on Windows that, that you still don't have an alternative for? Well, um, although we do have a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat the question, <laughs> exactly. What, why are people still booting in Windows and not only using Linux? What, all, what are the main um, applications they still have in Windows that they don't have in Linux? Well, the first thing, it's basically not a question of application, but it's a question of people know Windows and they don't know Linux. So they just boot to what they know. Okay, this is the first thing, and we are talking about elementary school teachers that really don't have the time and don't have the patience, the patience to learn anything new, they just, just want to use what they know. So they just put to Windows, it doesn't matter what it has, and that's a problem with every Linux distribution, in every project. Um, the other thing is, in, in Windows, there are other, pro other programs and other applications. There is an Intel stack for uh, uh, the classroom that basically uses the same thing that, that we do with iTalk and uh, JCompre and all of that they have in, uh, in the Magic Desktop uh, thing, which is a little prettier, but although it doesn't work very well, but people just... And then Microsoft made a lot of press about all of their features, which are just standard features, and it's harder, always hard for us to make sure to push Linux around. Yes. Did you get any um, negative feedback from parents, perhaps, who would want their children to learn Windows because it would be more useful in the marketplace, perhaps, or there'd be a perception that you, if you're going for a job, you want them to know the PC that they probably have at the desktop? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I uh, repeat the question. Did you have negative feedback for, for parents uh, because they want what everybody is using, Windows is using, is used in the marketplace and not Linux, uh, so they don't want to use Linux because of that? Well, actually no, actually no, because since it's for younger kids, there isn't that uh, negative perception yet. So when a teacher uses Linux in a classroom, um, there isn't, uh, they are not very, it doesn't matter if it's Linux or Windows. At least on our focus group, when you use it, there is no negative uh, conception of that. A link question would be then, if you said for young kids as they move to middle school, mm -hmm. school do they then come into uh, a difficulty of having access to Linux or software? Do, if people, if um, it's difficult for young people that started with Linux to have uh, passed to Windows because it's what they have in schools and all of that, no, I, we didn't have any feedback, negative feedback for that. And I mean, we shouldn't have. I, I don't think there should have any negative feedback with, with that because, and that's our government fortunately uh, supports open source very well, and we have other projects with our company and other companies uh, for uh, laptops, usually normal laptops, for uh, older kids, with also, uh, which also have Linux installed. And in schools there are many projects where so most computers have dual boot installation. So, they have... working at school on one system, then going home in the family computer would probably be a Mac or, or a Windows PC. Mm -hmm. That might cost some... Yeah, um, so if uh, I'm repeating the question, a kid who is working in Linux at school and then it goes home, it has only a Mac OS or Windows system, it's different. Um, we didn't have any negative feedback on that, so I'm not sure if it's a problem. Maybe it is, but uh, I really don't know. <laughs> you. Do you have any idea how many kids actually use the, uh, the Linux system? 
Uh, how many kids actually use the, the Linux, the, our Linux version? Uh, we really don't have any real numbers. What we do is our support line, which is um, only on second level support. We receive about uh, 20 calls a day uh, about it, which usually very simple questions, uh, things that they don't know how to do in Linux and sometimes, and most of the times are hardware problems that were passed wrongly to, to our uh, line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Flavio.